What is up guys? Welcome back for week 7 of the GPC. This week we are taking on our good friend Dom's Game Room. Dom, the coach of the coat, the couch, the coach of the Richmond Rayquazas. Sorry guys if I stumble over my words a little bit. It's quite late. I've been building all night for the uh, Token Minorities March Madness Tournament, which if you guys caught the video yesterday was an announcement that that is happening today. Uh, it's actually starting an hour after this video goes up. So definitely go and check that out. It's going to be an insane tournament. But as you can see, our team looks a little bit different this week. You might have not noticed that I had an Alolan Marowak, but I did. No, I'm kidding. I actually made a transaction, a few transactions actually. I made uh, my team uh, quite adapted to my last few matchups and heading into playoffs as well. I wanted to make sure that I had every possible option uh, looking forward into the last three weeks of the season. Uh, because we do end on week 9, as well as potential playoff matchups. So, uh, looking at that, uh, I did drop Kabutops, Aerodactyl, and Absol. And I picked up Alolan Marowak, Blastoise, as you see on the team, and Aromatisse. So those are the three transactions we made. I didn't want to do a separate video for that, because um, I know that you guys don't necessarily enjoy watching just transaction videos, because it's not really that interesting. Uh, but I did want to give you a little update on our team, so it has changed quite a bit. Um, three months specifically. I did drop Absol because I felt like it wasn't necessary in any of my remaining matchups. So, yeah. Now, let's look over Dom's team really quickly. Uh, he's got... Um, I, I don't think we have a bad matchup. He, he doesn't have a super scary team. But he does have some threats. Uh, he has a Tapu Koko, a Mega Beedrill, a Latias, an Entei, Donphan, Keldeo, Magnezone... Whimsicott and Whirlipede. Whirlipede is there, of course, because of the point values, but that's uh, probably not going to come against me. Uh, but if it does, I am prepared for it, so it's not too bad. So the first mon you see here is Drizzy. Uh, of course, I do still want to keep Zygarde at the top of the kill leaderboard. Uh, right now, it's at 13 before this game, and uh, Landorus is ahead of it uh, by 2, so it's at 15 kills. Uh, so I do want to get Zygarde back up to the top if I can this week. Uh, I do, I, I like having kill leaders, alright, uh, I had Mega Gardevoir last season, ended in first, and this season I want to end off with Zygarde in first as well, so, yeah, uh, this set is made to sweep through his team, is, essentially, uh, I just need to weaken the Latias, and I need to make sure that the Dawn fan is about at 50%, and I can get up a Dragon Dance on a forced switch, like, for example, on Magnezone or on Entei, which can't touch me, uh, outside of, like, HP Ice, uh, and then go for a uh, Thousand Arrows, knock out the rest of his team. Zen Headbutt is there specifically for Keldeo because I won't be able to damage that thing too greatly, or at least I don't think I will. Uh, and I'll be able to knock it out after Stealth Rocks at plus one. As you can see, our spread right here is Adamant 248. I have the 76 in Special Attack because I have Sludge Wave this week. As you guys can see, he has a Whimsicott. I'm rocking Mental Herb so I can stop him from encoring me into Dragon Dance and Sludge Wave him and kill him after Rocks. That is the idea behind this set. Uh, the 76 uh, special attack EVs mean that I can take him out after rocks. Always. Uh, unless he has leftovers, in which case it's still a roll in my favor to knock him out heavily. But it's a little bit less of a roll. So I think it, it falls down to about a 75% chance to knock him out. But realistically, the only thing he can do back to me is Moonblast me. And if he's max HP, he's probably rocking a lot of speed. And he will not be able to do that much damage to me. So, uh, the 184 speed right here, this is 272 is to make sure that I outspeed, uh, I believe, Tapu Koko uh, at max speed. His max speed Tapu Koko, I do outspeed that. Uh, so, actually, I outspeed his Mega... No, sorry, this is what this is for. I outspeed his Mega Beedrill, speed creeping my Megalopony, essentially. That's, that's the reason that's there. At plus one, <clears throat> I outspeed that thing. And, of course, at uh, neutral, without the rays, I do outspeed uh, the likes of Magnezone, uh, and that's about it, really, because his team is quite fast. And that gets us into our next point, which is, this is the first time I'm going to be running this, and I'm really glad I picked up a Lolowak for this reason. Uh, I'm going to be running Trick Room this week, and I'm bringing Kolberg Gorgeist uh, specifically so I can check the Mega Beedrill, but also the Keldeo. Uh, I want to be able to deal with, like, a Calm Mind Hidden Power Dark variant, because that is possible against me, uh, seeing as how I have a lot of Dark Weeks, or even Hidden Power Ghost, uh, realistically. Uh, either, either or works. But uh, I want to be able to deal with that as well as Beedrill's knockoff. So I take about 50% with this spread from a Mega Beedrill from his U-turn. And I can synth it off. It's not a problem. 
And with a Trick Room up, I'm faster than him, and I can burn him as well. So that's the reason behind the set. Frisk is always an, ama an amazing ability. It helps me out so much uh, with these games. Seed Bomb is there so that I can at least hit the Keldeo. Unfortunately, I don't have a move to hit the Magnezone. That might cause a little bit of an issue, but we'll work through it. Uh, Will-O-Wisp, Synthesis, it's a, it's a pretty basic set. Uh, so it's one of my Trick Room setters. My other Trick Room setter is going to be Lucky and Bad Jirachi. Now, I worked on this team with Johnny. Big shout-outs to him. Go check him out in the description down below, guys. He's in the uh, coaches. And um, we figured the Trick Room was a good option this week because Alolan Marowak actually does a lot of work to Dom's team. And I'll get to the set when I get to it. But as you can see, I have 248 HP. 252 special defense. This is so that I can take on Latias, essentially. I, I want to switch into Latias. Even if he's rocking Shadow Ball, he's not going to do that much to me. The problem is my only form of recovery is Leftover, so I'm going to have to watch out with that and be very careful about when I go for Trick Room, uh, because that also means that I outspeed him on the following turn, and if I U-turn into my Alolan Marowak as he goes for a Shadow Ball, that is bad. So I do not want that to happen. Uh, I'm going to get up Stealth Rocks with this thing, and uh, Healing Wish is there so that if I get up the Trick Room and his team is severely weakened, and there are three to four mons left. Uh, I can go for the Trick Room and then Healing Wish up my Alolan Marowak, even if it's taken prior damage in the game, and sweep through his team. And I'm gonna about to show you guys the Alolan Marowak set. So it's Max Attack, Adamant, uh, Brave actually, because I wanted as little speed as possible. As you guys can see, these are uh, minus speed natures. I'm sassy on the uh, Jirachi and I'm also sassy on the Gorgeist uh, because he has a lot of really good special attackers. Um, including Keldeo. Like, Keldeo was the main thing I wanted to check, and I wanted Jirachi to check his Latias. Uh, his physical attackers, I wasn't so worried about, uh, and his... except for B, but Gorgax can still check B to some extent. And Alolan Marowak can actually check Tapu Koko and uh, Magnezone without a Trick Room up because of the Lightning Rod ability. I'm bringing Lightning Rod this week over Rockhead, even though I have Flare Blitz, because I only envision myself clicking Flare Blitz against one Mon, and that one Mon is his... Um, his Whimsicott, because Shadowbone doesn't necessarily kill if he's max HP. Uh, I can also click it against his Dawnfan if it comes in on rocks and takes a Shadowbone. I have a chance to knock it out with the following Flare Blitz. So, that's the idea behind the set. Thunder Punch is there for Keldeo, so under Trick Room, I can sweep through his whole team. As you guys can see, Tapu Koko, Beedrill, and Magnezone will all die to Earthquake. Latias, uh, and Entei, excuse me, I forgot to mention Entei. Uh, those four specifically will die. Uh, Flare Blitz will kill his Whimsicott and his Whirlipede. His Dawnfan, like I said before, I need prior damage. And uh, Shadowbone is there for the Latias and just to hit generally, and it gets defense drops as well, which is amazing. And Thunder Punch is there for Keldeo because it can knock it out from uh, after rocks very easily because of this investment. So I'm rocking max HP, of course, because I don't need any speed. I don't need any special attack. I don't need the defense or the Spit F either because this thing can already take hits very, very well, except from Keldeo and perhaps Dawn Fan if it is max attack. And uh, I also want to watch out for Beedrill's knockoff because I do not want my Thick Club getting knocked off. That's the last thing I want because then that's going to make this thing a lot weaker. So that's that. Next up, I need to check to his Entei. His Entei is surely to be an issue and I don't want my Zygarde getting burned. So I decided to bring J Cream's 14, the Blastoise. I did nickname um, Alolan Marowak uh, hashtag Twitter bio because uh, for the longest time I had... Uh, Team Alolan Marowak uh, before Sun and Moon came out in my bio and I had it up there for like I, I think like four months it was insane, but uh, yeah, I'm bringing Blastoise specifically for his um, <coughs> For his excuse me There's Dawn fan and his Entei so Dawn fan I don't want it to spin if I get up rocks so I can always switch into gore guys So that's not a problem. I have the cold Berry for the knockoff. We're, we good uh, Blastoise is here for Entei like I said he can bring the uh, the Patent, the patented set with uh, Sunny Day, Solar Beam. The problem is he can't run enough other moves to check my entire team. Like, he either will not be able to out-prioritize my Lopini, as you guys will see in a second, if he doesn't bring E-Speed. Uh, if he doesn't bring HP Ice, then he won't be able to hit my, uh, my Zygarde. And if he doesn't bring a Fire move, then he's not hitting my team for much damage at all. So... Uh, that's he won't be able to hit my Jirachi essentially. So if he runs Sunny Day, he needs to pick his three moves very carefully against me, because uh, he has to run Solar Beam to to knock out Blastoise. And then the last two moves is between Sacred Fire or Fire Blast or whatever, uh, HP Ice and E Speed. So he has to be careful with what he chooses if he does bring that set. Otherwise, if it's a banded set, I have Blastoise. Uh, I can take its hits easily. Stone Edge does nothing. Bulldoze does nothing. 
Uh, Sacred Fire and Flare Blitz do absolutely nothing to this. Scald and Ice Beam. Uh, Scald is there, of course, for the NT and the Dawn fan. Ice Beam is there for the Latias. Now, let me explain. It might not seem uh, very intelligent to bring Ice Beam because this thing doesn't have a very high special attack stat. It won't do too much damage. But the point is, uh, if that scenario happens where his Latias has Shadow Ball and I go for a Trick Room with Jirachi, if I U-turn out, if I go into Lopany, I can't stay in the following turn. I can fake it out, but I'm going to kill off my own Trick Room as a result, so that's not smart. Basically, what I'm trying to do with this Blastoise is make sure that his Latias uh, stays in check and can't set up a Calm Minds in front of me because I have Haze and Ice Beam. So I can always uh, Haze it down and Ice Beam it. And if it's uh, Calm Mind, Sub, uh, with no recovery, uh, and it's two attacks which Psy Shock and Shadow Ball, then it can't hit my Zygarde too hard and I will be able to 1v1 it with this, essentially. So, this is a check to his Entei, but it's also a backup check in case that scenario happens where I get up a Trick Room and I have to U-turn out into something. And uh, that would that something would be Blastoise in that case. So, uh, I had to run Haze. He does have a little bit of setup on his team, specifically with Latias. Like I said, the Entei before, it can get up uh, if it goes for the weakness policy, anything like that. Uh, I can always Haze that away. Uh, I don't really want to take a Solar Beam, but I'll just wait until the sun fades, essentially. And, uh, yeah, so that's that's really the only uh, dangerous setup I can see. Uh, other than that, maybe Fell Stinger Mega Beedrill, but that thing's going to destroy me anyway. And, uh, yeah, that's that's about it. So Blastoise is there for that reason. It's there for the Entei. That's, uh, I'm not going to go into any more detail about it. And finally, we have Luna. I'm not bringing any fighting moves on Lu Luna this week. And uh, this might seem a little bit weird, but I have decent checks to his Magnezone. For example... If he can hit my Alolan Marowak with Hidden Power Ground, or Hidden Power Rock, or Hidden Power Ghost, or anything of that nature, then that means that he can't hit my Zygarde for too much damage. Like, he can hit me with a Flash Cannon, but I'll knock him out with Thousand Arrows if he wants to stay in. So, uh, it's dangerous for him to uh, to stay in on my Lopany to begin with, and if he does for whatever reason, then that means he can't hit one of the other two, so... Um, Return, fake out, quick attack. This is to check Mega Beedrill with no HP investment. Beedrill dies to fake out plus quick attack, guys. Uh, Toxic is there for the Dawn Fan because that is one of the prime things that I have to wear down for Alolan Marowak or Zygarde to win. So Toxic is there uh, only for that. It's it's really only there for that. So uh, that's that's the set. Uh, it's very simple. It's got enough speed to outspeed Tapu Koko. I'm not going to go and try to outspeed just Adamant Beedrill when Tapu Koko is a real threat. Uh, I do have to run Jolly this week, unfortunately, but it's fine. I do have enough power to do a lot of damage to the Latias, and uh, the 40 HP is going to ensure that I can live a max HP, max defense uh, Latias' is psychic anyway, so uh, that's going to help a lot. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the team that we're bringing. We are going to jump right into the replay, guys, and we will be right back. Alright, guys, here we are, and uh, Dom did not bring the Tapu Koko or the Mega Beedrill. So, I was actually ecstatic when I saw that. I'm like, his team is extremely slow. Uh, I can definitely deal with this team with what I've got. So, let's uh, let's hop right into it. I'll show you guys how the battle went. Uh, I looked at my lead options, and seeing as I have the Blastoise, and my, his only real threat to my Gorgeist is his Entei, I am going to lead off with Gorgeist, and it turns out that he leads off with his Keldeo. So, that is absolutely perfect for me. Uh, he leads off with Joey. Uh, who is also Jake Creams 14, which is my, my, my Blastoise's name. I'm just going to throw out a Seed Bomb, and he lets his Keldeo take damage this turn, which is awesome. And uh, on the following turn, he taunts me turn 1, which is awesome. That's amazing to know, because that means that I have another chance to set up my Mental Herb uh, Zygarde, potentially, on this thing. He lets me hit, hit him with another Sludge Bomb, so now he's in range of everything that I want to hit him with. So this is amazing. I'm just going to go for another Seed Bomb on the following turn, because I don't care what Switch is in. I have decent Switch ins to everything on his team. So he's going to bring in the Whimsicott. And now the fun starts, because this thing is a an annoying mon, to say the least. He's going to go for sub. I'm like, okay, that's not too bad. I want to get at my rocks as soon as possible, because I know I can spin block. His Keldeo is low, and I want get, to get off some chip on his Entei uh, and his Latias. So, that's going to help a lot. He's going to go for the Leech Seed, and I'm like, oh no, this is bad. He's going to Encore me into Stealth Rocks, and I probably should have seen, seen that coming and shouldn't have stayed in. Uh, but realistically, I only lose another 6% for that, and I do get to scout another move on his set. So I see three moves, Sub, Encore, Leech Seed. I'm thinking he has to have an offensive move. He is going to go for the Moon Blast on this turn. It's going to do a little bit of damage to my Gore guys. Not all that much, because I am specially defensive this week. And uh, he's just going to fire off another Moon Blast. I'm going to keep this thing healthy, just in case Keldeo gets out of hand for whatever reason, if it has rest. And uh, now I'm going to switch out. 
and I'm gonna go back into my Jirachi right here as he goes for another Moonblast, so that is fine. I'm, I take no damage from that. He's gonna get a special attack drop, doesn't matter. Obviously, my only offensive move is U-Turn this week. He's gonna go for a Leech Seed. I'm gonna be able to get off a U-Turn right here, and uh, I'm not gonna break his sub. I do see that he is quite defensive, uh, more than likely, and I'm gonna bring in Twitter Bio, and uh, he's gonna go for another Leech Seed on this turn, and I'm just gonna break this thing's sub with a uh, Shadow Bone. Now, I don't expect him to stay in because this Shadow Bone is going to do a lot of damage. So I'm actually going to switch back out into my Rachi, predicting something like maybe Dawn Fan to come in so that I can get the U-turning momentum on it. But he actually stays in and just goes for another Moonblast. And now he's kind of forced out. He's going to switch out into his Magna Zone. And this is fine for me because I can just go for a U-turn right here. And I'm going to go out into my Alolan Marowak. And uh, now this thing is sitting at 88%. And... Now, Magna Zone shouldn't be able to knock me out. I see leftovers, which is great information for me because uh, I know that this thing is not choiced. So I'm able to calc how much, if he had Hidden Power Ground, how much it would do. Uh, I calc it up. It does max about 70%. So I'm thinking, okay, cool. I can just go for Earthquake here. If he switches into Whimsicott, it's fine. If he switches into Dawn Fan, I get to see what kind of set it is. If it's fully physically defensive, uh, especially defensive, if it has leftovers. So that's fine. I'm just going to go for EQ right here. But Dom crits me with his Hidden Power Ground or Hidden Power Rock. I didn't ask him which one it was, uh, but he crits me, and that is not good. So now I'm going to go out into Zygarde, and uh, he's going to switch out here. And he's going to go straight out into his Keldeo and sack it. He feels like he doesn't need it anymore, so that's fine with me. I'm going to knock out the Keldeo. We're now down to a 5-5, five and five, but I lost one of my main sources of offense, so this is not looking good for me. Uh, right here, he brings in the Latios, and this is the scenario that I was terrified about. I'm going to switch out into my Jirachi, but he goes for Ice Beam. So that reveals to me that he's already lacking one kind of coverage move somewhere. So I'm going to go for a uh, U-turn here, as he actually goes for a Thunder Wave. And this U-turn is going to do just enough damage, guys, so that my Fake Out into Return from Megalopony, even to a max defense uh, Latias, will take it out. Uh, even though I am a jolly nature. I'm gonna do I'm gonna go for fake out. It's gonna do 18% I calc it up. He has to be max defense and uh, My return does a minimum of 42 so I'm chancing it on a roll, but it's a very good chance in my favor uh, So I am gonna go for the return right here, and I am gonna get the knockout on the Latias So that is a big problem to me gone That is one of the things that could definitely check my Zygarde later in the game now He's gonna go out into his Dawn fan and I'm thinking, if he superpowers me right here, and he's offensive, I am screwed, because I lose my Lopany, and that is a big, big part of my win condition for his Entei. Uh, so, I'm thinking, okay, would he run superpower specifically only for my Lopany? And I'm, and I'm thinking, you know what? No. I'm going to go for Toxic. I'm just going to go for it. He's going to go for Heavy Slam, so I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. Uh, I guess he had that there for the Aromatisse, so that I couldn't set up on this... Excuse me. Uh, makes sense. I'm going to frisk his red card as I switch into my Gorgeist. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's good to know that he's red card. Uh, he's going to go for an Earthquake. I'm fine with that. And I'm just going to go for a Synthesis right here. He's not going to let his Dawn Fan take any more damage. And he's going to go straight out into his Magna Zone. Now, like I said earlier in the Team Builder, if you guys missed that, then I'll say it now. I can't touch this thing. But I don't need my Gorgeist anymore because his Keldeo is gone. So I'm just going to go for a Will-O-Wisp. And I'm going to nullify this thing's... Uh, leftovers recovery essentially I'm gonna keep it at 94 all the time and he's gonna go for another flash cannon here on this turn uh, as I actually switch out and I go on to Jirachi and he's gonna go for another flash cannon I'm not sure why I did this exactly uh, I didn't need to make this play because I could have easily let Gorgas go down uh, he's gonna go for a hidden power ground uh, confirming that it is probably hidden power ground right there and I'm gonna go for a u-turn and I'm gonna get out into my Zygarde now if for whatever reason he was heavily defense invested This was a good play because it meant that thousand arrows definitely knocked him out I've already seen leftovers, so I know he's not Shuka and he does stay in with his Magna Zone, which is perfect I am gonna knock that thing out now. He's really low on resources in terms of mons in the back uh, Dawn fan can only really ice shard me and it's toxic his Entei doesn't really do anything to me uh, it has to be very heavily speed invested and be carrying HP ice uh, to have any sort of shot at knocking me out. And uh, he brings in Whimsicott right here. And I'm thinking, okay, I don't even have to Dragon Dance. Uh, I can just go for Sludge Wave as he goes for whatever he wants to go for. If it's Sub, then he weakens himself. If it's Leech Seed, uh, then I'll knock him out because he hasn't gotten his leftovers yet. And if it's uh, Moonblast, then I'll still knock him out. So... Uh, he goes for Leech Seed, and I do, in fact, land the Sludge Wave on another Grass and Fairy type this season, guys. Drizzy putting in a ton of work with that Sludge Wave. I wish it would have happened last week uh, against the Shaman. Unfortunately, it didn't, but 
Uh, Drizzy still coming through this week. He's gonna go out into Eric, his non fan. Uh, I'm actually going to sack off my Gorgeist at this point because Ice Shard actually doesn't kill from here. Uh, even with the uh, the poison damage, obviously, because we're we're uh, at 13 percent, and he's gonna take two extra rounds of Toxic as a result, which is awesome for me. Uh, that means that now. Uh, here actually on this turn guys. Oh, whoops. Okay. Well, I'm gonna pause it real quick get back to that turn All right, we're back here and um, so he knocks me out and right here. I'm actually considering uh, Now that I know that he's red card the problem is if I go for a fake out with my megalopony He's going to f uh, red card me out and I really don't want that So I'm thinking okay Well, my best possible play right here is to go into blastoise the problem is I'm not sure if blastoise is actually faster than this uh, at this point, I don't know how much or what he sped crept with his Dawn fan. So this is a little bit risky because I risk taking a lot of damage on my uh, my Blastoise for no reason. And uh, if I do, then his Entei could be a problem. But ultimately, I decide, okay, there's no way that he's got something for Blastoise as well. He's going to go for an Ice Shard. Uh, it's not going to matter because I am going to outspeed him. That's why he went for it. And I am going to knock him out with a Scald, and my leftovers are going to bring me back up to full. His Entei does come in. I am sort of fearing that set that I talked about earlier in the Team Builder, the uh, Sunny Day Solar Beam set. But I know that if I get off damage with the uh, Scald, even in the Sun, uh, I will be able to repeatedly go out into Lopany and fake him out and eventually wear him down to the point where he would die. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to Scald. He does go for the Stone Edge, revealing that he is more than likely banded. And I am going to do a lot to this thing. And uh, he's going to hit me with the following Stone Edge. And J Creams 14, picking up two kills in this game on the Dawn Fan and the Entei. The two things that it did come for. The Zygarde knocking out uh, his Whimsicott, as well as his Magnezone and his Keldeo. And Lopany taking out the Latias. So, uh, honestly, a perfect game. Uh, other than the crit on Alolan Marowak, um, everything else went according to plan. I didn't get to set up Trick Room, unfortunately. Uh, that would have been really cool to do. But, uh... Yeah, you know, sometimes that happens. Uh, you do get crit, but I still managed to pull out a 4-0 win. Uh, if I didn't get crit, I probably could have made it a 5-0. Definitely not a 6-0 because my Gorgeist was toxic, then it was eventually going to go down. The game would have played out a little bit differently, but I think I would have still ultimately ended up with the win. Uh, I think the big thing was him letting his Keldeo get so weakened very early on by my Seed Bombs. Uh, that really put, set him back because he didn't have a huge offensive presence anymore. Uh, it was really just stalling with his uh, his Whimsicott, and then uh, it, it all came down to when his Magnezone went, finally went down, and that was the turn that it went down. So, yeah, that's uh, going to wrap it up, guys. Uh, make sure to check out Dom in the description down below, guys. He hasn't been uploading a lot of content lately, but his content is really good when he does upload. So, if you guys want to go check him out, definitely do so. I'll leave a direct link in the description to him, as well as every other coach and the uh, the GPC channel and uh, the GPC Twitter as well, as usual. And make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys next week.